Well, hello guys. Um, I've been uh, looking for a uh, new uh, uh, version of uh, a, a mint, oh, sorry, of a, a Linux distribution on which to do uh, development in a virtual machine. I've got a couple, but I wanted another one. And I've been looking at a few of them, and I've decided today I'm going to try and uh, use Linux Mint, the Debian edition, um, not the Linux Mint based on Ubuntu, which is the one you normally get. This is the Debian edition. So if we go to their website, um, linuxmint.com, all right, um, you'll see it, version 20 has been released of Mint, um, Linux Mint Ulyana. Um, now that's all good, but we don't want this, all right? You've got your different uh, 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 Cinnamon Edition, Mate, XFC, and so forth. But we're going to go to Download and click on LMDE4. So this is the Linux Mint Debian Edition. So it's not running on top of Ubuntu. It's running on top of, Linux, uh, uh, of, of Debian. And uh, they do tell you yeah, why they're doing that. All right, why do they have two versions of the uh, distro, uh, meaning Linux Mint uh, Cinnamon, one running on Debian and one running on uh, on Ubuntu. All right, so once you've gone on there, um, you can just choose, it tells you it's 1.9 gig. You can just choose your, your closest mirror and download it from there. Um, I've already downloaded it. Um, it's a normal, just click on your mirror and it starts downloading and it puts it in your download folder. So, all right, so um, we can uh, minimize that and we can go to VirtualBox and say I want to create a new machine. Okay, and it is, the name is LMDE4. All right, the type is Linux and the version will be Debian 64 bit um, since this is Linux Mint on Debian, not Ubuntu. All right, so go to next. Okay, they say you can get away with two gig of RAM. I want three, five, all right, because I've got a few extras that I normally run at the same time. Um, create the hard drive now, the virtual disk now, yes. Okay, uh, normal disk image, yes. Okay, dynamically allocated or fixed size. I'm gonna dynamically allocate it. I don't want to use up all my hard drive space um, of my host without needing to yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to make it grow to a maximum of 85 gig. Um, you could probably get away if you just want to test it with, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 10 to 15 gig around there. Um, and if you're just going to be using this on, on your machine for, you know, normal day-to-day -day stuff like browsing, um, you know, and a, a spreadsheet, email and so forth, um, then you can maybe push it up to 20, 25 gig, depending how much data you want to save, how many documents you've got and so forth. Um, the nice thing about VirtualBox is you can always add another drive and uh, connect Linux to that, the client to that. All right, so we create it. Okay, it's gone and created it. So the first thing I do is I click on settings then, and I come and make sure I'm happy with everything. Okay, shared clipboard. I do want a bi-directional shared clipboard so I can copy paste. Okay, the rest is fine. You've got disk encryption here, which you can enable um, for extra security, of course. Um, but many versions of uh, Linux distros um, offer you that, op uh, that the, the choice when you do your um, installation of whether you want to encrypt your hard drive, yes or no. Now, I don't know if LMD is going to ask me that. I don't know if I'm going to have to search for it. Um, let's just see what happens. Um, like I say, I've not done LMD4 before. This is the first time I'm doing it. Um, all right, so system, okay, so memory is fine. I don't have a floppy, so I switch that off. The processor, I want to stick that up on uh, four, four of my virtual cores. And uh, display, I normally stick up onto 64 meg for um, uh, uh, Linux distros that's got a graphical front end. Um, I just chose 64, I've never run into problems with that. Um, okay, the rest is fine. Enable 3D acceleration, I'm not going to enable that. I'm not sure, I seem to recall from a while ago it caused me problems with Debian in a virtual box. Um, uh, that was a previous version of Debian. I'm just going to leave this off and, and see see what happens. Okay, storage. Uh, the first thing I do is I come here to the controller and I make sure that my use host IO cache is switched off. All right. It's not always faster, but it's often faster than if you switch it on. 
um, you would think it's faster with it on but no not always all right so audio I don't really care about network okay so net um, is the default that's fine we'll give you access to the internet and so forth but I want to use um, where we a bridged adapter so I've got access to my computers on my internal network as well um, serial ports I don't care about uh, USB yeah I do have two and three devices so I'm gonna leave it on two and the rest shared folders and so forth I'm not worried about so that's complete all right so it's now ready to start we go to start here okay and it's gonna ask us where does the installation lie all right now um, we could go and look for it um, over here we go to um, uh, add and we go to downloads and there's my ISO file all right so we add that and then <clears throat> excuse me um, and sorry guys if you hear a little bit of a hum in the background it's it's my my heater that's on here it's a little bit cold here today um, all right so we select LMD cinnamon yeah so it is cinnamon okay and uh, we choose that and we say start all right so it asked me immediately um, what do I want to do um, you I do have an NVIDIA driver okay on on the host all right but remember this is in a virtual machine so it doesn't actually have direct access to my NVIDIA driver so I'm not gonna select it with the NVIDIA driver maybe there's something built into the latest LMD uh, that uh, will somehow use that um, we could you know you could look at that but I'm just going to use normal LMD4 I'm not going to be doing any graphics related stuff really this is all development development type stuff so we let that boot up and it should look similar to cinnamon yes it does all right so here we go let's see what happens let's minimize virtual box in the background here and let's just leave that and see what happens All right, and there it's booted up, okay, into the default look. Um, that looks basically exactly how Linux Mint uh, Ubuntu version looked when I installed that. So, so far, well, obviously it looks the exact same. Now, we can fiddle with a few things now, but I'm not really interested in fiddling with anything. I just want to do my installation. Um, so I go to install Linux Mint. And it should now start asking me certain questions of how I want to install it. All right, welcome to the LMD installer. It'll ask you some questions, etc. So we go to next. Okay, we say English. Uh, okay, we are. I'm South Africa, let's say. Okay, um, where are you? Well, yeah, okay, Johannesburg, fine, that's cool. Next. Um, I'm not in Johannesburg, but that's okay. Um, okay, the keyboard layout, uh, choose your layout. I'll be using South African, which as far as I know is the same as English US, um, but all right, South African. Okay, we'll put in a name. Um, I'm just going to put in a name of, you know, let's just say my name. Okay, Dean, your computer's name, I'm just going to say is LMDE4. That's what will appear over the network. Okay, a password, make it my super difficult usual password. Okay, oh, and there we have, encrypt my home folder. All right, it doesn't ask me if I want to encrypt the hard drive though. Okay, um, I want to encrypt the entire hard drive. All right, but yes, let's say encrypt my home folder. Um, that's already good. Um, my personal data you won't be able to get to then in other words, but the actual uh, um, Linux installation you could get to. Um, but uh, but not my own folder all right so we're next on that uh, computer's name must be low oh, of course sorry yes I forgot about that LMD E4 all right and we say next okay erase a disk yes uh, we want to definitely use uh, LVM 
logical volume management. So like I said, if we run out of 85 gig, uh, we can always add another hard drive in VirtualBox. And then using LVM, we can extend our current um, uh, device that we're using will probably be SDA. Um, we can extend that with our new size. So you don't have to create a new hard drive like in Windows, you'd have drive C, drive D and so forth. But Windows can also expand. Okay. And there we have encrypt the operating system. That's the one that I was looking for. All right. So that'll encrypt absolutely everything. Okay. Now, typically, if you're worried about um, you know, things being done properly, you'll say fill in the disk with random data. All right, so the, the, the thing is though, that I've noticed in the past, I don't know if LMD4 does it, but I've noticed with some other distros, the moment you say fill the disk with random data, he then goes and fills up your entire 85 gig with random data. So the 85 gig is allocated already. I don't want to allocate the 85 gig immediately. I want it to grow as space is needed. All right, so I'll also give it then a passphrase that is gonna ask me the moment to start my computer up before it can even uh, start uh, uh, loading the operating system, he needs this password. So I'm actually now double double encrypted. Um, my home folder is encrypted and my entire operating system is going to be encrypted. All right, we can go look at manual partitioning, um, just for interest sake. Um, so without using that, let's just quickly say next. Um, no partition table is found. Yes, create one. And, and this is where you, you can go and create your swap drives and so forth. Um, okay, so it's already got a default swap for me added. And SDA2. Uh, okay, so that, that's all good. Um, but uh, let's see what it gives us here under edit partitions. Okay. Um, yeah okay so that's exactly what you expect to see but all right i i don't i don't want to use this um uh, partition information uh, so it's using g parted that's nice um you can create your partition and so forth and in here i'm assuming you'll be able to do your uh, encryption as well um but i don't want to do it here i'm just going to let the the default run through so if i go back out here and i come to the beginning here again okay um choose the correct there is only one hard drive choose the hard drive uh yes we use lvm put on the encryption again put in my super secret password uh, and um okay so like i said now everything will be encrypted and uh we say next on that it's, yes it's going to delete everything we find with that because we're in a virtual machine okay install the grab boot menu too all right um, I'll just say leave it on SDA. All right. Uh, next on that. Okay. So yeah, it's just a quick overview of what we're going to be installing and stuff, or what it's going to be doing. LVM enabled, disk encryption enabled, all good. All right. And we say install. And now it should go ahead and uh, I don't think it's going to ask any more questions. Um, if I just remember how uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon, uh, the normal Ubuntu version works. So we can just leave it and let the installation continue. And it's uh, busy copying files over, as you can see. It'll take a while. Okay, so uh, let's see here. The installation is complete. Do you want to restart your computer or use a new system? No, we want to restart. Okay. Now after this, what we're going to have to do uh, why is he not picking up my click here? Uh, sorry, did work. Um, after this, we're going to have to install the VirtualBox guest editions. And uh, then we can get into installing some uh, applications like uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, Rust, etc. Something I do notice is that it's loading Linux 4.19, whereas the um, the uh, uh, Ubuntu version is on uh, 5.3. So there, there's one change already. All right, so what he's doing at this point is he's asking me for my um, login 
to be able to get into the files into the operating system remember that password we set up just now I do notice uh, there's no fonts showing me what to do so I hope I'm in the right place here yep and we say okay on that and we should be able to continue Alright, and there we are. We presented with a login screen and I can log in. So far, it looks the same as Linux Mint Cinnamon Ubuntu. So I don't think the look is going to be an issue. It's going to be the installation of software and so forth. I've previously run into a VirtualBox Guest Editions issue with installing Debian um, Buster. And we'll see if we come into the same thing today. The system is currently running without hardware acceleration. Yes, that's fine. Okay. For this test, that's fine at least. Okay. Um, it's telling us there's an update as well. Uh, welcome to the update manager. So there's a few things we've got to do. Why won't that disappear there? Okay. We'll leave that a moment. Okay. Let's see what the update is. Oh, we already are on the update manager. What am I doing? Okay, so so the thing is, this check your video drivers will not go away. Okay, so that's definitely an issue. I can't drag this window around. Okay, uh, let's. I can open. I can't open the start menu. All right. Um. Seems like nothing is reacting. All right, let's open up a terminal. All right, see if I can. Okay, for some reason, it seems like my mouse isn't being detected. Okay, so if I do that and then select, I cannot select that. So my mouse is completely. That's why I can't close the window. The mouse is not detected at all. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reboot of this machine again um, and just uh, see if it makes any difference. So, see, it, it captures it, all right? So, it knows that it's text, but I can't do anything. All right, so I'm going to do a reboot now. Alright, so let's do a reboot and let's just see what happens with the mouse. Maybe I should have done a shutdown instead, but let's just see. Okay, so... Okay, now he seems to be aware of my mouse. All right, so um, let's go back there. Let's see if I can uh, get in now. So before we logged into Cinnamon, okay, the mouse worked. Um, let's see now once we're in Cinnamon if it still works. Okay, so if I click here, there it goes. All right, so I just needed to do a reboot. It might be a virtual box issue. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, but okay, so it's got a you know, we can follow your first steps that we can set up and so forth. Um, you don't have, yeah, okay, let, let's let's do it. Okay, we'll do the snapshots. Okay, my password, and uh, I'm really just going to snapshots to get rid of the warning. Um, okay, yeah, we'll do an R sync. Um, just move up. I can't move up here okay well I think what we should rather do first is because I if okay if I make this virtual box screen or window a bit bigger you'll notice that LMD is not resizing according to that screen size all right um, so if we close that um, just come here yeah okay um, where do we change the screen size that was over here by settings system settings here we go okay so we have a screen 
screensaver display all right so it's on 800 600 at the moment so let's just see what happens if you've gone to 1024 by 768 okay it it, keep, it seems to resize to that okay so you you can resize it okay but i want it to always resize to the size of my actual virtual box screen all right so if you're in full screen it doesn't matter you could just set it to your your actual resolution of your of your display and it'll work fine but i, I want to install virtual box so that we we can uh, resize our virtual box and then the screen resizes and there's also to enable the uh, clipboards and so forth so um all right what we'll do is we'll come up here in virtual box we'll go to devices and insert guest editions okay there's picked it up do you would, would you like to run it say so run okay and he wants of course he wants our password again um all right so this will take a moment okay and it's uh, installed and it says the system is going to have to be restarted okay so uh, we'll restart the system again um shut down the computer and we just do a reboot uh where's my restart okay and then uh, the virtual box guest editions will be installed and our video should be fine if we resize the window and we should also be able to copy paste between the host and the client system all right there we go so it's asking us for our first password password so we can actually get into the operating system itself so that's running now all right so uh, if we resize now it's still not going to you'll notice that this gray area it's still not resizing that window um, we aren't in uh, cinnamon itself yet all right so we log into cinnamon now and uh, there it's resizing the window and uh, I think it's gonna work okay yeah uh, check your video drivers you can ignore that and let's make this a little bit bigger stick it up top in the corner there and drag this out and and there you go so the screen oops the the screen resized okay as you can see all right so um okay first steps let's quickly go through this so the the snapshots let's quickly set that up then um snapshots are quite a, a, a nifty idea for doing a quick backup of you can do a, a backup as such of your entire system um, alternatively you can do only for instance uh, um, your Linux files itself or only your home folder um, you know in case you, you let's say for instance you want to do an upgrade of Linux it's always good to take off Linux Mint it's always good to first take a snapshot of uh, your current setup try and do the upgrade if it fails then just roll back your snapshot um, and you know, we can go ahead and create here and okay so we don't want that and when I cancelled that it killed everything okay why okay could be this drivers thing but other than that it all looks right we'll get back to that just now again um, one of the things that we can do is uh, very quickly if we come to the back here let's just open up uh, my uh, text editor okay so this this is my text editor on my on my main computer all right so I, I did press a shortcut here to log, log me out okay so let's just get back in there all right so if I take that text um, if we zoom in ever so slightly if I take that text so copy all right and uh, close without saving and then inside here we should be ha we also have a text editor it'll be under uh, accessories I think it is there's a text editor and I should now be able to paste just get rid of that again and I should be able to control V and there it is all right so the clipper also works so you can uh, uh, copy and paste between the host and the client that's thanks to uh, VirtualBox guest editions all right close without saving yes that's fine okay um so like i say let's complete this here okay we'll worry about snapshots later multimedia codex um you might want to do that um yeah let's just do that um 
do you want to install uh, yes uh, tell, okay so this is what you'll want to do if you're gonna be playing uh, DVDs and all sorts of stuff um, on your computer oops I think that was the wrong password um, this one I would by default you know unless you know that you specifically don't need it I would say install it okay but what one must remember is it does say here yeah, um, uh, play popular audio click okay it doesn't say that here but these are not necessarily open source okay so if you want to stick to purely open source stuff uh, then maybe that's not the route you want to go but for a typical user you would do that all right so let that install all right and uh, it's done it and the window disappeared um, all right, then we've got the update manager. Okay, um, if your shield icon is your update provide software. Okay, we've already got it. So, but let's just see what it says if we launch it. Okay, so all right. Okay, so run the update manager. Um, so okay on that. And it's going to ask us like, do you want to go to a local mirror? We say yes. Um, Local or close, closer mirrors to you, uh, in other words, more local, or typically faster to keep your computer updated than any of the others. So all you do is you click on this uh, um, mirror here, the, this text here, and what it'll go and do is it'll go and ping a whole lot of servers and find which is the fastest. Okay. And uh, so in my case, I'm in South Africa and he's picked up that. Uh, Yes, this one is the fastest, yeah? So we'll apply that and we'll do the same. Uh, okay, let's update our cache quickly. We've got to do this base one as well for Buster. Buster is uh, Debian 10, is it, by the way? So it's the latest Debian there as well. If, if you had to compare um, what I'm doing right now with uh, setting up the official repositories, um, it would be similar, for instance, in Microsoft's case where it uh, will figure out on its own where it should download from. Um, yeah, you actually have the option of telling Linux where to download from. Um, but obviously you want it to be the fastest, so you choose a local one. Usually a local one is faster. At least you have that option in Linux to choose where the where you get your updates from. All right, so it's updated that cache. Now we must come look at the base buster as well. So we click on that as well, and it'll do the same thing. It'll find us the the fastest uh, uh, local mirror, and uh, it's trying. Now normally the South African ones are very fast, but today. It's quick but not that quick okay but but you get the idea you can sit and wait for it to sort through all of these now and find the fastest one so yes um, I used to use always this first one but uh, lately the second one um, so let me, let me oh there's an even faster one uh, okay well let's take that one all right so we apply that as well it says cache must be or the APT cache must be updated and uh, we let that happen all right, and there we have it. The base has also been uh, changed now, and uh, everything is good. Um, you've got your additional repositories as well, you know, empty at the moment, um, etc. Okay, but uh, you don't need to fiddle here. So you can close that down. All right, and now it's telling us a new version of the update manager is available. Um, you, you might have noticed this in Windows sometimes as well. The update manager itself must be updated, and that's what we're running into now. So we just say, yes, we want to update the latest update manager. And then I expect it to tell me that there are a few updates waiting to be downloaded. Um, it'll be interesting if there's none. Um, well, let's see. All right, and now we have the latest version of the update manager and it's looking for new updates. And there we have a whole lot of updates that must be installed. Okay, so it's 550 megs worth of updates. Um, so I'm going to install all of those, but uh, 
let's just see if there's something I must do further down here. So we've done the update manager, you can do then your desktop layout. I am going to be doing that just now. System settings, software manager. Um, all right, so uh, we've basically finished uh, with the initial install other than the fact that it now wants to do a big update. And uh, then we should be on the latest version of LMD4 and uh, all should be good so all right so we go to install updates and it'll ask me again okay so there's additional ones uh, so new uh, Linux uh, 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 kernel that is downloading as well um, so it's gonna ask us for our password all right and it's gonna start doing uh, that update for us what we can do so long is uh, just a few things I like changing is firstly the height of this uh, task bar at the bottom here. I don't like that. So uh, I right mouse click here, go to panel settings, that's what it is. It's a panel and uh, we can just change the size here. Do something a little bit better. Might be a bit small for you guys. I won't make it as small as I normally make it. I'll leave it a little bit bigger. All right, and uh, that's fine. So I close that. So that's all smaller now. The other thing then is the theming. I like a dark theme for all my stuff. So you'll notice that the default is already a dark theme. All right, but that's not. Then why isn't all this dark as well? And let's say, for instance, if we open um, a text, uh, uh, let's say the equivalent of Notepad. Uh, come on, and where my uh, accessories? So. Um, if you open up Z here or X Ed, okay, you'll notice that as well. It's not dark themed, okay. I want it dark themed, okay. So what you do for that is you come up top here, you go to sorry, yeah, you go to system settings, all right, and um, yeah, you it'll tell you yeah you can choose your your certain screen like uh, uh, window effects. You know when you open and close them, how do they close? Do they you know go down? Uh, you know like a Mac or you know you just choose your pretty looks and so forth um, but let's say we want to go to themes okay so our desktop theme all right that's that's this theme our desktop theme is already dark okay the controls one yeah so these are all the different things that have their own themes is there's one two three four five okay I like having the 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 the, the controls dark as well all right so in my case i'll normally choose one of these ones here like mint white dark okay and there everything goes nice and dark all right see uh, that's uh, all nice yeah that that looks good now um I'm, i leave the title bar um if i come back to the settings here i leave the the, the window borders okay light colored if you make them dark as well it's not always so easy to see where the title bar is when you quick would want to grab something and drag it around all right um, you can change your icons as well um, there's a whole lot of different icons you can choose from um, your mouse pointer you can change etc um, and, and then of course you can add many more uh, 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 themes as well um, my theme for instance on my host Linux here is uh, one that I modified quite drastically myself um, so you can play with those things and, and, and it, it, it's good fun um, okay so it's telling me my cache is out of date just download all the themes that are available currently it's only 67 when you go through this app uh, through system settings but there are actually there's a website with many 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 more um, and so you can go through here and you can choose your theme um, you know, there's many different themes you can select from here. I like C black a lot as well. Um, but all right, so okay, so I've changed my theme and um, then close the text editor down. And okay, that's done. So another thing we can do, um, if you let's say for instance you want a shortcut to your text editor, um, let's say Control Shift T. Okay, so the first thing we do is. We open the terminal app. You can click over here to open the terminal app. So let's let's just go to terminal, all right? And we type in uh, xed. I just want to make sure that that's the name. Yeah, that's the name of the. Uh, it's like typing in Notepad uh, in Windows in a, in the terminal. We've now just typed in xed. So that's the one we want. So if I want to create a shortcut to that, 
okay so then we go to um, uh, keyboard and you'll find your keyboard and then yeah you can set up shortcuts all right so you go to custom shortcuts and we say add a custom shortcut and I'm going to say uh, text editor okay and the command is X E D um, there we go um, I've got no specific uh, icon or anything for it or whatever for oh sorry that's where you select the executable okay so um, okay and we just say add then you come to the bottom and on unassigned here okay you click on that double click on that and then you say like in my case now it's control shift T all right so now he's bound that okay so if I now say control shift T and uh, there we go our editor opens up all right so it's a nice quick way to to open up editor okay but so, so I'm showing you can you can create your own uh, uh, shortcuts and so forth um, and there, there are many that already exist um, then you can come look here okay things that you that, that are already created for you and so forth um, but okay so you, it's very easy to add your own, own shortcuts and so forth um, so for now I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that and oh the download is almost finished already um, but it still has to do the installation it's just doing the download now of uh, the 550 meg so it's going to do a, a, a install still which is going to take a while so i'm going to stop the video again at this point and once that's done uh, i'll be back i was thinking something else we can do so long while we're waiting for this uh, updates to be installed it's downloaded it all um, it's now just busy uh, unpacking it in other words uh, uncompressing it and doing the installation uh, we can go and actually change the desktop background okay um, so let's just for now we're going to go into full screen view on the virtual machine okay so that's my machine the server and yeah we're fully in the virtual machine now all right so uh, we can right mouse click and uh, change desktop background all right and uh, here it comes up with all backgrounds that are already installed in the system um, for different releases of uh, Linux Mint in the past, um, I think this Tara is is it Tara or Trisha? I can't remember which is the latest Cinnamon uh, Linux Mint 20. But all right, so yeah, it's uh, slowly but surely loading all these images for us. So let's click on one, and uh, okay, he does. That's just. A side effect of the uh, uh, virtual machine that I had to uh, it doesn't fill the whole screen immediately it takes a moment um, I found a way to make it quicker just to move your a screen around or something and redraws it this doesn't happen on a live machine though so right so there we've got a, a nice background beautiful beach um, one lone person seems to be on the beach uh, that's beautiful actually I'd love to have been there right now um, and so you can go and choose um, but of course you can choose your own as well I mean if you come to pictures okay it'll take you to your pictures folder all right and I have no pictures in there at the moment um, but then you can put them there um, if you have another folder for instance that you want so it's not pictures then you can add it over here you can add the folder that you want to add with your pictures in and uh, it will then be in this list as well and you can choose from that so um, all right so we've changed the desktop background and uh, uh, let's just see a uh, while well, that's running in the background still there all right so this little icon here is warning me about some problems okay we should actually check this once we've done the reboot but we'll go look at it so long um, it, it's small things it's like fonts and stuff um, yeah it's a, not fonts language pack sorry you can install the language packs but I can't do that now you can't uh, install two things simultaneously all right um it won't allow you to do that um i think windows does the exact same thing i'm not talking about a downloaded like you know seven zip that you downloaded off the internet that you install while windows is doing its updates that that's fine but windows update itself cannot run two instances at the same time and linux is the same um but you can you know put things from the network uh, from the internet and so forth you can you can install them all right, so he's found the language packs that must come sort out, and uh, that's the only thing. Um, I'm going to do that once this install is done. 
uh, this update is done and uh, let's just quickly see uh, um, if we open up files uh, the shortcut used to be windows key e or meta e um, let's see if he opens that up my hard drive is running flat board here so it might be taking its time yeah there we go so i opened it twice by accident so yeah let's just all right now something that's quite nice maybe for some people um with this uh file manager okay is that you can split the screen in two all right with f3 okay and you've got two folders so whatever's up top here refers to the the, the, the the side that you're working with so at the moment i'm in my home folder if i can call it that on this side but on this side i might want to go into for instance um uh, documents all right so you're going to documents and if there was a document i could take it and drag it over all right into here um, i personally don't do that um, i prefer just to open another um Oh, come on another uh what is this called is this uh nemo i think it is called uh let's just quickly check about yeah so this is nemo another popular one is dolphin um i found i prefer nemo though um all right so i would typically just open uh, another one and drag between them and and do whatever i want to do um so i've got three open at the moment now so um let's just close them down um, oh, oh, sorry. And the other thing is uh, also you can, of course, change your view um, in Nemo. Yeah, let's just make it slightly bigger how I would normally use it. So you can change your icon size. Okay, make them whatever you want. They can go quite big, which is quite handy when you're looking at thumbnails of images. Um, you don't have to open a specific image application to to see larger versions of it uh, of these pictures um but yes and and what you can do is let's say for instance i create which i often do is for my programming stuff for instance i create a new folder and i call it projects all right and then i go into projects all right and then by bookmarks you'll notice if you look at the left hand side here okay if i go to bookmarks and i say add bookmark okay it's added projects here so i can be anywhere i can be music wherever i am i can be multiple levels down and i can just quickly go and i can come on over to projects and i'm by my code stuff um so so that's quite nice another thing that you can do um which is similar to uh internet explorer uh, file explorer as far as i know from windows um if you click on this little icon over here all right you can actually see the path itself and you can like copy paste that and use it for instance in a terminal or whatever you want to do with it um, you can zoom in and out and, and all that sort of stuff um, you can also change the the list view all right um, three different views you've got here um, i found in windows I, I prefer this detailed view more um, but in linux strangely enough i work with this one more um, but that's that's just personal choice uh, there's no good or bad to that so all right so um this is definitely going to take a while still so um let me uh, get back to you in a moment and once it's finished then we can continue all right and uh, there we have it um this your system is up to date and a reboot is required it's probably because of the linux kernel but there were so many things changed that it might be for other reasons as well so um yeah at this point um we'll do a reboot and um and uh, take it from there uh, let's see there we go and uh, in fact I'm gonna do a complete shutdown and uh, I'll continue with this later again all right check to you later see you oh, hi guys I'm back again sorry I got very tired there and I, I needed to take a break and I decided to leave it for the next day being today um, so all I've done is from uh, when you saw last is I've just re restarted uh, um, the LMDE logged in and this is what I'm faced with all right so I'm gonna switch off this uh, show this dialogue at startup I don't need that 
Um, and then I notice here's an icon here that tells me some system reports require your attention. So I'll click on that. Oh, this is the language packs. Okay, so let's install the language packs. Alright, log on, Ach, uh, authenticate. Okay, so that's sorted out. So, alright, so we basically have a clean system now. Um, uh, what we can do is we can just have a quick look at, well, let's uh, put this in full screen. Uh, well, before I put it in full screen, I want to show you something. Um, there's, if I go to my host system, all right, and I type in uh, driver manager, this, this app comes up, the driver manager, okay? Um, takes a moment, and in here, uh, oh, put the wrong... Uh, All right, so this is where it's going to look at any extra um, drivers that are installed and so forth. Now I've got a whole lot of NVIDIA drivers installed on, on my host because I've got an NVIDIA machine. All right, um, and uh, this is where I control through this app, I control them and I can switch versions and do all sorts of things with it. Um, now, I'm, I'm, is it finished? I, I just want to cancel it actually. Uh, come on. Okay, so there it shows you know some drivers that I've got to options, different versions and so forth that I can switch between, etc. Which I seldomly do, but what I'm getting at is is that driver manager exists, okay, on my host computer. However, um, let's go into full screen here. Alright. However, if I come here into LMDE and I type in uh, driver manager, there's nothing. Okay. So I don't know um, other than the fact that I know in this particular case if I had to install this version or LMDE um, onto a live machine with NVIDIA it's got built-in drivers because we saw that as an option when we started the installation I don't know what happens the case uh, of uh, an ATI card um, uh, so I, I'm not sure what's going to happen at that point. Now, to, it doesn't worry me really because I'm only going to be using this in a virtual machine. So I don't really care about that. Um, but you might care about that. You might just want to do a little bit more research on, uh, you know, or do a test and just see, you know, do, does your video card actually get detected and uh, does it download the latest drivers, etc., for you. So it's just one thing that, that you should take cognizance of. Okay, um, all right, so if we, if we look at our menu, it's a fairly standard cinnamon menu, all right, um, you know, shortcuts on the left here to some major stuff, and then the categories uh, as per usual, and then inside the categories we've got different apps. Alternatively, just come to the top, and um, or I don't even think you have to, you just open it, and you can start typing uh, some word in and, and you know, it'll immediately take you to whatever you're doing. So you'll notice here it's got Libra Draw. So if we if we get rid of the search um, for Office, um, the default is Libra Office, which is good. Um, what I did notice is under Graphics, um, GIMP is not installed, um, but that's no big deal. You can do that yourself through the uh, software manager, and. Um, yeah, so so that's basically the system up and running. Um, you'll notice, uh, well, I've shown you, it's got Firefox on it. You can go and install other ones also through the software manager and so forth. Now, for me personally, um, why I want to use this virtual machine actually is as a new development uh, virtual box. So I want to go to the next step, and that is to start installing some development stuff. Now, all I'm going to be doing is I've got other videos on this, so I'm going to go fairly quickly over this. I just want to see that can it can it work on on on, on LMD4. So I'm going to be installing Visual Studio Code, and I'm also going to be installing Rust. All right. So Visual Studio Code you can install through the software manager. However, that's a flat pack and is very large, um, and uh, I, I don't feel like going that route. I'm just going to download it directly off the internet. This is not a good thing to do if you don't know what you're doing, guys. Uh, typically, don't download things stuff off the internet for Linux. 
all right well for anything for windows whatever but uh don't do it all right so okay let's do a, a search here for the thing is you got to trust your source and um i do trust microsoft in the sense that i doubt there's malware viruses in the um software all right so we do a search for visual studio code we get code here all right and uh, it should be on uh, 148 yes all right now because we're on a debian uh, uh, um, uh, distribution it detects it and it gives us the option here to download the debian version which is what we're going to do um, just for interest sake the flat pack is 1.1 gig in size extracted is over three gigs um, this debian uh, uh, download is i think 56 meg or something like that um, and then I'm not sure what it extracts to uh, 60 meg. All right, so all right, so we're gonna just download it and open it with the GDB installer. Um, so we're just gonna say, okay, you could just download it, save the file, and double click on it, and do the same thing. Um, but okay, so that's the one thing we're gonna do. The other thing we're gonna do is we want to download. Uh, well, for one thing, I actually want to check to see if Git is installed. All right, so uh, we open a, a new window here and. Uh, uh, let's just uh, zoom in ever so slightly and zoom in again all right so i'm just going to type out the word git and see if it picks up something okay git not found all right so git was not installed which i think on the the ubuntu version of uh, uh, mint it does get installed by default but that's no big deal um you know just uh, sudo apt uh, or apt get whichever you prefer uh, come on oh come on sorry uh, finger problems this morning um, all right so let's just sudo apt install all right we'll put git on come on install git um, sudo apt install what did I do wrong sudo apt oh so, so sudo all right, Stanley, spelling mistake. Okay, sudo. All right, so yeah, it should just uh, install Git for us very quickly. Uh, are we sure? Yes, just accept the default press. The whatever is normally in capital, like the Y in the end, the Y means that's the default. So if you just press enter, it assumes you meant Y for yes. Yeah, sometimes the N is the capital, and that assumes no for the default if you press enter, unless you you know type a Y or N. In. Okay, well, while that's going on, let's let's quickly go and find um, Rust. Um, uh, it's rustlang.org, I think it is. Um, rustlang.org, if I remember correctly. Yes, okay. www.rust forward slash, uh, slash lang.org. Not slash, uh, what do you call it? Minus sign. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. All uh, right. Version 146 already. Okay. So, um, okay. So let's get started. Uh, we say get started. Okay. Brings us here. And uh, what we need to do is run this command. Okay. Oh, sorry. There's one more thing. Before, one of the first things I do uh, when I do any development environment is to install another package which is uh, build essential um, I'll just see I'll just see if I need it on this box we're gonna try and install it um, but let's just give git a moment to complete all right so so git should be installed so if we just say git there's some stuff okay git is recognized okay so the next one that we want to do is sudo apt uh, what is it build dash essential Let's just see what it does with this. Um, oops, sudo apt install. My mistake. All right, uh, so it looks like it's already installed. All right, that's good. Um, okay, that's very nice. I think the cinnamon, the the, the 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 Ubuntu one doesn't have it. You have to do that as a separate step. Um, in, in fact, I needed to do that in a video the other day when demonstrating how to install a, a dev environment on a, a Cinnamon Ubuntu box. Um, but it looks like LMD's got it. So, okay, so that's good. So we don't need to do that. So, all right, we can minimize that. We go back to our browser. Uh, back to our browser. So we copy this. Uh, let me just zoom in slightly here. 
so we, we, we copy that line up top here all right sorry I'm going to go a little bit quick through this because I have got other videos on this all right so we just quickly go to our uh, command line again paste that and uh, oops I forgot to see and curl all right okay and it'll be downloading for us Okay, so what you want to do at this point, you just want to accept, uh, let's take number one, just proceed to just the default stuff, just one enter. Okay, so that's done it, and um, all right, so something that's important um, after installing uh, Rust is uh, to read down at the bottom here, okay. It tells you that it tries to put everything uh, of rust in your your path okay it doesn't always work okay um, so what I normally do is at this point before I start changing anything so well, I just open a new terminal all right and then I type in a rust command which I know uh, it should pick up um, let me just uh, again zoom in a little bit all right so if I just type in cargo for instance okay it's not found all right so it did not put that into our path okay you can uh, just put it in temporarily alternatively you can put it in permanently all right so I'm going to go the permanent route um, now they do tell you that this is basically what you need to add to your path but inside this uh, ENV file it actually points to the bin all right so I'm just I'm going to use the bin all right when I uh, um, when I when I change the path, so to change the path, um, let's open a, a new terminal again. All right, just let me working. Well, maybe I can reuse this one. Uh, yeah, we can we can use this one. Uh, let me not have too many terminals terminals open for for no reason. Come on, um, that one. All right, so that means I'm using this one. All right, so uh, we can use uh, some uh, uh, text editor um, by default installed. There's one called Nano. Um, on uh, on uh, uh, cinnamon uh, LMD and uh, Ubuntu, and what we need to do is we need to edit the hidden hidden file in our home folder called dot bash rc. Okay, and then what you go and do is um, okay, let's can maybe expand a little bit here. Um, you, you can go and type all over the place here, but you know, it, it, right at the bottom, the easiest thing is is to um, paste the following line of code. Um, paste that, okay? Uh, let me zoom in ever so slightly. All right, so where are we? Uh, there. So you wanna, you wanna paste this line at the bottom of your bash RC, okay? So what you're doing is, is you're basically saying, Go to my cargo bin folder in my home directory, all right, and add it to the path and still keep the original path. So you just add it to the path, in other words. All right, so we save that, all right, and Control X, uh, oops, uh, Control X, okay. So now it's not going to work in this terminal because we, have, we need to reload the terminal. So bash RC is reread. So we close that open a new terminal and when I say just now cargo is a rust command sorry cargo is not a rust command it's a it's a utility or a tool used by rust all right but um, like just try cargo for instance all right there it is so our path has been sorted out now rust will work fine um, another thing that you can do at this point in time is just make sure you've got the latest rust so it's rust up update um, rust up update let me just zoom in a little bit here for you again uh, zoom in and zoom in all right so you'll down to the bottom here rust up update and uh, it shouldn't find any updates but maybe uh, no we're on the latest so everything is good all right so what that means is rust has been installed and we finished with that all right so um, we can close uh, the terminal window for now all right so rust has been done uh, let's look at Visual Studio. Uh, yeah, Visual Studio Code. So we come to our download here, and uh, we see there's the the, the, the dev download file. Uh, in fact, I think it already opened it for us. Um, I'm not sure now. 
but it's trying to open it anyway. So, all right, so we can get rid of, uh, let's kill this here. Uh, close that saving. Okay. Code editing redefined, yes. Now, do remember this is a Microsoft product, and uh, the default on it is, is it does uh, take uh, some, uh, what it calls, telemetry from you. And uh, but you do have the option of switching that off. But remember, this is a Microsoft product. Um, all right, so uh, let's install that then. Okay, while that's unpacking, I just want to show you another thing that I noticed uh, just now. Uh, if I open a new terminal window, um, if you're used to uh, Cinnamon uh, on Ubuntu, normal Cinnamon 20. Um, you would be used to the LL alias, all right? And in uh, 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 LMDE, LL is not found. So, but you can go and create your own alias. Um, so zoom in and zoom in. So you can create your own alias. Um, basically, I'm not exactly sure which commands um, LL runs, but I think it is just ls l all right? I think that's that's all it is. Okay, um, you can go and see, but it's just a, it's just a shortcut uh, uh, that you can add to your um, uh, was it, what it is it to, I think to your bash RC as well. Um, so lsal uh, did I select here now? Intel net. Mm. Okay, so it's yeah. Uh, so it shows all the hidden files, everything in my root in my home folder. And um, okay, so just for intersect for you guys, if you don't want to see your hidden stuff, all right, um, all you need to do is just take out the A, all right, and it'll list it for you nicely one under each other. So that's this one here now. So I got from all of that, all right, we're just showing just the basic, uh, come now, just the basic uh, listing. Okay, so like I say, so that's something else I noticed as well, but that's not a biggie. Um, there are other versions of uh, or distributions of Linux that also doesn't have LL. It's just a um, an alias that you can create. So you know, it's very simple. It's if if you didn't know LL existed, you probably wouldn't even be using it. Um, but yeah, I use it quite a lot. Um, Alice, Alice, uh, well, LL and Alice dash L is the ones I use the most. All right, so it's still trying to install Visual Studio Code. So uh, let's just give that a moment. Oh, and as I said that, something happened here. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, all right, so it says it's uh, already installed. All right, so we just close that. So now if we come over to our start here and we look at programming, Visual Studio Code should appear, and there it is. So if we click on that, I'll open up Visual Studio Code. Okay, what he's going to do is, uh, if we just maximize it quickly, um, it hasn't happened yet, but uh, it normally pops up. There we go. All right. Here's this little pop up, and you can follow this and learn how to opt out. You can follow this link, okay? It'll take you to a website that's going to tell you to do exactly what I'm going to just show you now. All right. Um, where are we? Preferences, settings, and then type in the word telemetry. All right, so you got these two options here. Both of them are enabled, okay, by default, not disabled, but enabled. So telemetry and crash reporting is being sent. Okay, so I switch that off immediately. Okay, and uh, once you do that, you have to restart. I start from the bottom because once you do the top, and you've got to restart if I remember correctly. But all right, so we restart Visual Studio, and um, you know telemetry should be off. Um, all right, and we can close that down. All right, now since we began to be doing Rust development, um, what we can do so long actually. Um, how, how Rust works, for instance, is it doesn't really have a project file per se, like, like in, say, C Sharp, for instance, you know, a project file. Um, it actually just works from uh, either a, 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 a folder itself or a workspace. Okay, but uh, let's say normally for small projects, you just work with a, with a folder. So you can go and you can say open folder, 
all right and you can go and look for that folder where like I said I put my stuff under projects for instance you can go and look for that folder open it up and then say open down here and it'll open that project for you in Visual Studio Code another way of doing it is is actually to go to your project file and then say okay open up Visual Studio Code from here so if we go to the terminal and uh, I go into CD projects okay now uh, in order to create a uh, um, you can create sub directories here and so forth but in order to create a project in um, uh, using rust okay we like I said before we use something called uh, cargo all right so if we just say in the in in the projects folder we want to create a new subfolder that contains our project okay so you say cargo new and then the name of your app whatever you want to call it new app all right and you could specify binaries and all but that's okay because it's say intel net it's quite quick he's now gone and created it so if we do a ls um in this folder you'll notice he's created an, a, a new subdirectory called new app so all we need to do is change into new app all right and we do a ls on that you'll notice he's great let's just do an ls dash l on that all right so he's created the cargo toml and then the source directory the cargo toml folder all right this is where you want to be when you're doing your building and so forth okay, this is the folder that you would typically open like i just showed you in visual studio to open your uh, uh, project um cargo toml contains uh, all sorts of things like dependencies and stuff like that but th this is not a video about rust okay so now all you need to say is instead of going opening up visual studio and all that you could just say if visual studio is in the past that's 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 a thing if visual studio is in the past this will work else it won't work so if you say code dot in other words visual studio codes uh, code is for visual studio code dot means open current folder all right so yes it's worked okay so um and what i sometimes do is i leave this window open all right because i might want to do uh, 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 my git check-ins and stuff like that from that window um but sometimes i just work on the terminal inside here now to open the terminal in here all right you press control and then uh, i think it's the tilde till the key the one just to the left of number one all right you press that once all right and it's opened up uh, bash for you and uh, you can also now do all your cargo stuff in here, your good stuff and whatever you want to do in here. All right. So if I go and like click on cargo toml, all right, we might, there we go. There it tells us that the marketplace has got some extensions for us that will help us with toml files. See, there's no uh, colors or anything uh, of any kind. And if we go to source uh, for Rust, okay, if I want to say I want to have another print line, print line um, uh, actually that's a bad example let's say for instance I want to create a vector of u8 so I say let um, uh, d okay then I say v for vec okay e there's no code completion all right so you know there is some uh, syntax highlighting but no code completion so there's three uh, extensions you need to install if you want to work with rust all right um let's just undo all that all right so you come down on the left hand side over here to the extensions all right and the first one i put in is just rust all right so it's for Rust. take the stop one select it and install it should be a quick install all right there it is it's, it's already done okay the next one is uh, better toml uh, better toml all right i select that one and i install that okay that just i don't know what other than highlighting it will do for a toml file i've um, never read about it but the highlighting alone is makes it good enough okay so that's installed now for debugging we need to install code lldb all right there it is and uh we say yes to that uh, install okay okay so now is downloading some extra stuff all right for us um this is good um you just gotta wait for this to finish and then everything should be fine you'll see there'll be no reboots required or anything like that
Okay, so it says it's complete, but as far as I know, it's there's still one more thing that must happen. So um, let's just close LLDB down. Let's come on to Mania, and bam, there, here it goes. All right, some additional stuff needs to be installed. You say yes for the Rust extension, and there it downloads a whole lot of things off the net. All right, and that's it. Uh, terminal will be reused by task. Press any key to close it. So, okay, press any key and we close it. All right, so basically Visual Studio and Rust is installed and everything will work fine now. So if I want to quickly test this program, I want Hello World to print it out. Okay, so in Rust you'll say cargo um, bolt uh, typically first. All right, so you'll build your application. This is going to be in debug mode. All right. Alternatively, you can build your application in release mode. Okay, there are some optimizations you can add to Cargo Tomal for uh, um, release mode. Um, some some extra commands you can add to Tomal. Um, all right, but but now we've got both. We've got uh, the debug version and the 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 release version. So here's a new folder called Target. We go inside there. There's debug and release. All right. And uh, there's new app. There's your your binary, and you can run that. All right. Alternatively, um, you can just run from here with. Uh, so we can just say, uh, cargo, uh, car, come on, car, cargo run. All right. This is going to run the debug version for us, and there you immediately said hello world. All right, and um, all's good. You can actually come and look inside here. Um, let's say we want to run this thing directly, um, uh, not an integrator. So let's say open containing folder. So it'll open up our file explorer or file browser. Okay, and um, so it's stuck it. We, you've got your debug, debug in the release version. We want to run the release version, for instance. So there it is, new app. So if I say um, open in terminal. All right, and we say hello. Okay, for some reason, something is once again up with the terminal. Um, unless he opened a new one here. No, that's what we used before. Let's close that. And okay, so something is, keeps being up with the terminal, and I don't know if it's LMD or if it's because it's in the virtual box. So let's try again. Open uh, in terminal. Okay, that's, I don't know what to say about that, whether, I don't know who to blame about this. Okay, but another way you can do this, all right, is, so go, like I showed you just now, you can come up here, toggle, and you can get that entire path. You control C that, and then do uh, control Alt T to open a terminal. Okay, and then uh, we CD into that. Um, well, you don't have to, but okay, we CD into that release and we do a ls l on here. You'll notice that uh, that green one there is our app that we wrote. All right, so uh, we can just run it directly, new app, and it says hello world. So there we just run the release version. Okay, so the very last thing that I wanted to test um, before I uh, use uh, um, LMD for my development environment is that I can do some debugging as well. Um, so uh, if we come to our main source, all right, I'll just put a breakpoint right there. Yes, there we go. All right, so it's in the debug console. We click on terminal, and if it writes anything, it'll write it out here. So we press uh, F10, and there we write hello world, and we press F5, and the program is finished. All right, so uh, Visual Studio with uh, Rust coding and everything works fine. Um, so that's great. Um, one last little thing I want to show you is, uh, let's say for instance, uh, like under graphics for instance, I, I use GIMP a lot, okay? So, and, and it doesn't come by default anymore, all right? Um, I think it's this drawing that's actually replaced it. They say, say uh, GIMP is maybe too advanced for most users and they want something more simpler. Well, I think pure tradition should keep GIMP in, but uh, I use GIMP a lot. So, okay, so you can go to the software manager for that. And alternatively, you can just type in sudo apt git, uh, uh, sudo apt install git, uh, uh, GIMP. Uh, but we'll do it through the software manager. 
and uh, you can do searches for all sorts of things here like if you want VLC etc they're all here Steam for your gaming uh, etc uh, Audacity is very good for uh, uh, sound recording and so forth I use that a lot as well but alright so like I say I want to look at GIMP alright and uh, the latest version is 2.10 if I remember alright yeah, it's this one okay so let's see what he comes up with okay so he's got the flat pack I uh, hate it when they have flatbacks, um, but it does keep things uh, up to date, and um, you know it, it is a separate, basic install from the rest of your operating system. So, all right, 1.7 gigs to download, and four gig of disk space required. Okay, I think that that is a little bit crazy. Okay, let's just see if there isn't another GIMP. Yeah, here's, a, here's another GIMP. What's this one about? Gimp is an advanced PC. This might be just the normal one. Alright, this is the one I'm probably going to need. Alright, so yeah, 36 meg to download, 121 meg of disk space required. And <laughs> not 4 gig. Okay, so this is the one that you're going to want. But the thing is, this one is not always up to date. This is the one from the actual repositories themselves. They're not from the flatbacks. Okay, and um, so sometimes they're not always the latest. Remember, um, a Debian is not what they call a rolling release. So the latest version of software is not always available in the, in the software manager. They might be a little bit behind, but that's normally because they're doing a lot of testing on their stuff. They don't release it as soon as it comes out. Other than, of course, security fixes and stuff like that, and you know, things like that. All right, so I'm going to install this. I'll just say install that. Okay. If you guys uh, wait around for the end of this video, I'll let you into a very interesting little discovery I made, uh, a little secret I can tell you. Um, but uh, just just hang on till the end, and I'll tell you. Okay, and uh, there we have it. Uh, GIMP has been installed. Um, it did take a little while. Um, okay, so uh, let's come and look here. And so if we come to graphics, we should have GIMP. There we have. Okay, so like I say, on my main machine, I've got currently version 2.10. And I won't expect this to be anything less than that. Yes, 2.10. All right. So uh, that, that's good. I'm, I'm happy. Um, glad GIMP, GIMP is up and running. Okay, so there we've got that. Okay, so... Um, I can't think of anything in specific that I, I need to show you further now. Um, uh, the, okay, my, 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 my final feelings, all right? Um, I do think that the Ubuntu version um, of Linux Mint um, Cinnamon is not, not, not Cinnamon itself. Cinnamon, I can't find any difference between the two. Um, it looks to me the exact same. Uh, like I said, I did, I did change my, my theme, so it doesn't look like this. But uh, the, for the defaults and so forth, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, the options are all there. Everything seems like Cinnamon is 100%. But it is an older version. All right, I checked the version. It's an older version than the, 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 the Ubuntu one. All right, the, the Mint running on top of Ubuntu. Okay. The other thing is also, is like I said, the kernel, okay? I just got an update now for 5.4 something um, on my Ubuntu uh, Mint, uh, whereas now this uh, 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 Debian Mint uh, is 4.19, all right? So that's quite far back, um, but so that, okay, one must take that into account. Um, then the actual usage uh, of it, um, other than things that I, I, I can blame on the virtual machine, such as, for instance, the fact that I've got to do software rendering. Um, you know, if you're running this on a real machine, um, you wouldn't have that problem and everything will be fast. There's some, some really nifty things that you can do. Um, I mean, if I just, uh, I haven't set anything up here now, so I don't know what the defaults are. But if I quickly go out of here and I go to my own machine, uh, get out a full screen, all right, and uh, let's say for instance, so I want to shift uh, workspaces, okay, um, I've got my multiple workspaces, um, you can uh, look at it from that view, 
um, and choose your workspace that way. All right, you've got your normal, you know, like Alt tab, like you've got in Windows. Oh, sorry, that's the internal one that he picked up there. That's the default one, in other words. In okay, but I've changed mine to look like this. Um, so um, that that's all possible. Um, that to to do exactly that, what I just showed you. Actually, I'll show you where you do it. If you come here to your settings, um, we can close this Rust stuff. All right, if you come to our settings here, we go to effects. All right, this is where you would set them, okay? Um, you've got uh, different styles and so forth, okay? And then you can come to customize and uh, say switch that on. And here you can actually say, you know, how long, how many milliseconds do things take to, to transition, you know, if you open and close windows and stuff like that. that that's, that's uh, so like on, yeah, if I minimize this window, it's just bang, it's gone, all right? Um, on my own machine, let's say for instance I open up uh, um, a terminal window. Um, did I pick it up now? Maybe it's my keyboard that's giving problems with this. Well, I'm circling with a terminal. Um, oh, sorry, I, I pressed E, not T. That's what I keep doing. Uh, it's my mistake. All right, so so let's make this one a little bit bigger, for instance. All right. And if I close that, okay, you see it faded out a little bit more. Um, and I, 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 it'll work with uh, any window. So if I open uh, File Explorer, let's say I expand it. Uh, sorry, I maximize it and minimize it. Okay, so that was quite quick. Uh, now, hang on a second. Now, that was, that's again inside this virtual machine. Let's just get rid of the virtual machine. Boring background, but uh, I had to change my background. Uh, I'll put another one on uh, later. Uh, well, I can just show you, for instance, if, if I go right here now, um, you don't have to go through this to uh, change desktop backgrounds, okay? You can, for instance, just go and view your images, okay? So you open up your Explorer, you go to, um, like in my place, uh, we've got here yeah, GIMP images, um, back, oops, next cloud images. Uh, backgrounds okay and um, it's got a whole lot of images inside here um, quite a few taking its time now all right so there it's gone and loaded a whole lot of images um, that's what I say which is nice you can make them small all right we can make them nice and big so you don't need to open a viewer specifically um, so let's say if I want to change my background to something one of these things let's say I like this one for instance okay I just say right mouse click on it and I say set as wallpaper and that's done all right so I can close that and there's my new wallpaper all right so and and that that, that works the same in in uh, LMDE all right so um, if we just full screen LMDE quickly again all right completely go into it okay so again like I say so there's a few little differences um, but if you didn't know the the uh, Ubuntu uh, uh, mint version and you compare it to the Allen uh, to the Debian version, you would miss nothing. Okay, only once you used to the Debian one, you would notice a few things. Um, but like I say, I would have liked the Debian uh, version of Mint. Ah, uh, sorry, of the kernel to be much higher than four one nine, um, at least five. Um, but yes. Um, other than that, it's great. Um, I have no problems with it. I love it actually. Oh yes, sorry. There was something I wanted to tell you—a little, little secret. All right. What is interesting is, all right. Let's just get out of here quickly. All right. This morning, before I started make continuing with this video that I made for you guys today. All right. I tried uh, with uh, Vertman um, using QMUKVM. All right. I created a, a LMDE for uh, virtual machine. Okay. So it's a KVM virtual machine. All right, uh, show virtual manager. So I just got this LMD4 KVM virtual machine. All right, now I don't know if you could see my times down here uh, in the bottom left of my screen when I started doing the install the, the, the update um, of uh, LMDE, but it took approximately five hours just, just a little bit over five hours. And even then, I thought that was ridiculously slow compared to how things normally are done uh, or how, how Linux normally works. But okay, it took five hours. And I, well, one thing that it can be is remember in your virtual machine, you've got that caching that you can switch on or off that I showed in the beginning of the video. 
um, and in this case it was off maybe it actually wanted it on I mean you can experiment with that but what I'm getting at is this KVM one all right just the update all right in VirtualBox just the update took a little over five hours all right with KVM the entire install including the same update took approximately 20 minutes maybe a little bit less I, I don't I didn't actually time it okay so just for to say you guys some of you know I've already made a, a VirtualBox versus a KVM uh, uh, a comparison video and this is just something for those guys hey you know again but this time the difference is even bigger okay thanks a lot guys and uh, I'll see you next time goodbye